Hallelujah for your power, for your presence, for your goodness, for your glory. Hallelujah. Who is like the Lord? Mighty. And power and all of his ways. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What an excellent, glorious presence of the almighty, omnipotent, King of kings and Lord of lords. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, what a sweet savor. What a sweet presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. just trying to make sure feeling after the Lord <clears throat> um, there's twice that uh, a good friend of mine um, more than a good friend someone that you share uh, life with on I would say on the deepest level someone that you trust your physical life with someone that you um, trust them uh, knowing who you really are the way that you act when you're not in the pulpit and uh, that person has been here in two services with us uh, once during landmark and in tonight and both times that I've been in his presence here I've felt the urge uh, to share his testimony with you so I thought I was supposed to do that tonight, but maybe I will just um, do it. I, I, I'm supposed to do it, but I was just trying to make sure uh, whether it was tonight or not. We, we've reached a place where God doesn't want us just to assume things. Last night when Pastor was saying that he wanted our prayer to not reflect petitions, but thanksgiving, then I was pretty sure that I should preach. I've got a lot of material about praise and worship, and I just thought, well, we'll just have a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday clinic uh, about praise and worship. And then this morning I prayed and still seemed like a pretty good idea. Then this afternoon I prayed and God said, did you feel the wind change? Did you, did you feel that, Steve? And so a while ago when I was in Brother Zen Sia, uh, I wish if I had a spotlight, I would put it on him and his family back there. Brother Zen Sia was my right-hand man for, I don't remember, seven or eight years in Singapore. And we shared our life together in a very powerful way. And uh, he now has a wonderful family and is living in Modesto, it's very good. So I, I may have him come up later and pray a prayer with me because I want you to see him so when I tell his story that you'll have a face to go along uh, with it. But I'm going to go ahead and 
stay the course that God gave me this afternoon. Genesis chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. And then Genesis 8, 15 and to 17, and then I'll read verse 20. There is, uh, <clears throat> there is a gentle spirit of the Lord here tonight. To be honest with you, <clears throat> it would be easier for me to have preached about praise and worship, to taught along that line. Because the subject that I'm going to speak on, uh, I, I really do not want you to misunderstand. And so, God prompted me that there would be a gentle spirit here. And it is the songs that Sister Amy chose to sing and there's just a sweetness of God's presence. And I'm going to say something that I've never said to an audience. Um, when I was a teenager, I remember hearing late teens, maybe my early 20s, I heard Brother Jeff Arnold preach a message. And he preached uh, from the passage where Jesus sent his disciples just finished great miracles and Jesus the scripture said compelled them to go into a boat and he went up in the mountain to pray you remember the story they got caught in a horrific storm and I remember brother Arnold saying if Jesus didn't ask them to get in the boat he, the word compelled that's a strong word he, he really insisted but being God in flesh, he also knew that he was sending them into the storm. So why would a loving, all-caring God that knows that a storm is coming, why wouldn't he insist they stay on the shore? But instead, he insisted they get in the boat and get caught in the middle of the storm. And I remember Brother Arnold making a statement. He said, that not everyone was worthy of the storm. He sent the multitude home, but he sent his closest relations, those that were nearest and dearest, he sent them into a storm. Because he said, not everyone is worthy of the storm. And so here's the statement, the message that I'm going to speak tonight not everyone is worthy of this message. And I think that God chose you. I really believe that God wants me to share this principle with you. Not because you don't know it, not because you're not even practicing it, but to confirm to you that you're on the right track to confirm to you that God is working in your midst in an extraordinary, powerful way. Okay, take a deep breath and smile. Now you're real nervous. Oh, heavens to mercy. <laughs> we're we're going to end. It's going to end fun, okay? Whew. Genesis chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. I think that's an amazing verse. A world that was putrefied by sin. A world that 